Fort McMurray has been really good to me. And I've often said that the opportunities that I've had here, I don't, I don't think I'd have had in other places. So if you express, if you have a passion for being involved and making a difference, this is the place to do it. At the age of 51, I think I'm 51, I might need a calculator. I'm, I'm doing art full time as a full time business. Now at the beginning when, when I was making the shift out of the United Way, which I worked at for three and a half years, I was calling this my semi-retirement, but in truth, it's, it's not. I, I work as an artist seven days a week and love it. And uh, every day is a new day with new projects, new opportunities. So I've, I always painted a little bit as an adult, um, but it was really sparingly. And uh, you can see some of the early paintings that I've done were pretty simple. And, um, and then I went and experimented a little bit with watercolors in 2011, 12. And it was through the watercolor painting experience and doing portraits in watercolor that I sort of landed in this uh, wild color painting style that I've become somewhat known for. I all of a sudden decided it's time to have fun with painting instead of being so darn serious about it. Russell's contribution to the arts in our region and Fort McMurray is, is long and I've actually known him for quite a while. I first met him in 2013. Uh, I had auditioned for Keanu Theatre Company's upcoming production of Les Miserables. It was a big fat musical and I came in as ensemble and I learned a lot and one of the people that I was learning from was Russell Thomas. He had been very involved in theatre and the performing arts and also Keanu Theatre for many years uh, and he was a, a big big, big part of the evolution of Arts Council. Uh, when Arts Council was founded in 2012, Russell uh, came in as the interim executive director. So really, uh, without that base of him bringing his knowledge, his own experiences of the arts and the community and being an advocate for the arts for many years, to our organization as Arts Council. I mean, it was invaluable and we owe a lot to that. And uh, we really, really appreciate that. And he's still, even though he's really sort of focused more on his own artistic practice now and being a painter and, and what that means to him personally, but also professionally, um, he's, he's still such a, such a vocal advocate and a supporter, which is really fantastic. Yeah, somewhere on this journey, I discovered that the art was a way to give back. I don't think I had a, f a real sense of that at the very beginning, but Marty Giles asked me if I would be willing to travel to Calgary in 2015 to do a live painting at an event that they put on in support of our Health Foundation here and the Health Foundation down in Calgary. And I went, sure. <laughs> it sounds like it would be interesting to try. And so I went down and did a, a live painting of Robin Williams as Patch Adams. And it ended up raising, I don't know, $6,000 or so for the charities. And I went, that was easy. And then I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. So I give, a, I give away art to charities all the time. But the live paintings have become a way to kind of scale everything up and raise even a lot, a lot more money. Do you know where that's from? Yeah, from the Heritage Park. Park. Heritage well, Park. I'm not sure if it, the photo is on one of those power boxes right by Safeway that we go to every day. So we yeah. walk by it every day. And I finally said, I got paint that. And that's where it came from. But. You don't necessarily have to be an artist or an organizer or an actor, whatever your skill happens to be. Maybe it's working with, with seniors. Uh, maybe you have a love of, of, of children. Doesn't matter, everybody can make a difference. And uh, the other thing, I guess, and part of my story is, I, I it, was, it wasn't too late to, to make a, a significant shift. So to, to go to doing painting full time at the age of 50 says a couple of different things. One, you're, it's never too late. And, and two, you know what? 
what we were told as young people was, well, you can choose to be an artist, but you'll be a starving artist. <laughs> no, you know, we're doing really well. Uh, the business is well, and I have interest in what I'm doing from across the country. So the, the work, the, the people that reach out to commission me to do things, balances off that allows me the flexibility to help in the community and with charities throughout uh, Alberta. So I'm in a unique position that way, and, um, and I'm so grateful to the thousands of people, because it is thousands, that enable that all over the place, and as far away as Germany and, uh, and Thailand that have pieces of my art on their walls. The impact that Russell Thomas has had in the community and us as artists, us as arts administrators and arts advocates has been really profound. And through, through theater, through performing arts, through um, festival organization, through marketing and through his own now visual arts practice, uh, he's, he's had a hand in, in many, many things and a, and a really important part of the development of this, this community. I have so many stories, and the story I have told the most often, because I think it's something that people can really relate to in terms of, you know what, we're in for McMurray, but some crazy world, world-class kind of things can happen even when you're in for McMurray. So I had painted B.B. King the day after he died in, in May of 2015. About a week and a half later, I get a message on Instagram, which I was starting to play with at the time, and uh, a lady claiming to be BB's wife's goddaughter asked about buying it for BB's wife. And I said, oh, "I'm sorry, it uh, it's already sold, so I, I can't." She said, "Can I get a print or two of it?" "Yeah, of course, sure." So I, she made that arrangement, sent off the prints. Again, I wasn't fully, fully believing she was who she said she was. Because that's pretty, pretty cool, right? So a couple of weeks went by and I was in here and the phone rang and it was BB's wife phoning. And uh, her name's Joe. And she said, I hope it's okay that I called. And I said, sure. She said, I just wanted to tell you that I wept like a baby when I saw this painting. I was just, it was so beautiful. And I wanted to thank you. And I hope that's okay. So we had this beautiful conversation. And um, she was telling me about their life together and the fact that they met in a bar in 1964 in Vancouver. And the bar was called, wait for it, the oil can. It was a human moment. In somebody in their grief of having lost someone they loved dearly. And the number of times that's happened, whether it's with famous people or regular people, the role that an artist can play in, in helping during times of grief uh, is, is really quite something. Uh, or not grief. Maybe it's just a total surprise for somebody. It's just such an honor to be the person that gets to somehow facilitate some pretty awesome moments. Mm -hmm.